schemes 
of NCAs to actually match what is happening at national level. Because politics is a lonely journey, Mr. Speaker, and it's a very thankless journey that after serving in politics, Mr. Speaker, and an NCA retires from politics without a payment scheme that will take care of them, then it becomes that you will have put the NCAs at the worst level that nobody will desire to ever live as an NCA. Mr. Speaker, alongside that, there needs to be a review of medical cover for the NCAs. Because when they don't have this medical cover, it again exposes them to the greed that we see that has compromised the working of NCAs in the county. Mr. Speaker, I also wish to note in my address today that MCS are facing any challenges with adjusting the ceiling of their budget. And as, and as I said, Mr. Speaker, my coming here was not clearly ceremonial because I sit in a committee that should constantly be able to review the issue of allowing MCS some kind of flexibility in reviewing their budget and their ceilings. Alongside that, Mr. Speaker, it is eminently important that the county assemblies live by the idea of independence. And that independence Mr. can only come when their resource function is made independent. It is high time, Mr. Speaker, that the county assemblies, not only in Midori, but also in Kenya, can start having an independent account where they can withdraw money at the base of their development. And because the roles of the county assembly and those of the executive are set out in section 8 and section 30 of the County Governments Act 2012, respectively. The county assembly is mandated, among others, to, re to receive and approve plans for the management and exploitation of the county's resources and the development and management of its infrastructure and institutions. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, the county assembly is mandated to uh, approve the budget and expenditure of the county government. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, the county assembly is mandated to approve the borrowing by the county government within the tenets of the law. All these functions, Mr. Speaker, cannot happen where NCs are weaker than the society. They must be stronger, they must be independent, and they must be without flaw because of resources. As I said, honorable members of the county assembly, the law requires you to perform the following key roles when we fight for you to be able to be more independent and stronger as members of the assembly. Maintain close contacts with the electorate and consult them on issues before or under discussion in the county assembly. Present your views and options and proposals to the electorate. Attend sessions as we always proudly do of the assembly and provide a linkage between the county assembly and the electorate on the public service delivery issues, as well as extend to level knowledge and experience to any issue for discussion in the assembly. I have uh, honorable members that this august house and in particular you honorable members are up to the task and that you have the will and will continue to discharge your constitutional duties and leadership responsibilities immediately and compassionately to our people. Mr. Speaker, the Constitution of Kenya advocates for separation of powers between the executive and the legislature, and the legislative arm of government. Indeed, I have elaborately said that these are key tenets of democracy that we must work on as a house. The two arms of government are obliged to exercise their mandates with the same uh, constitution and other, other, other legislation playing a role in forging this county forward. Honorable members, a county plan for the county ensures that no public funds is appropriated outside a planning framework developed by the county executive committee and approved by you esteemed members. The County Governments Act 2012 provides for the county planning under section 102 to 102, 115. Just to remind ourselves, the key plans 
expected of the county government include county integrated development plan, county central plans, county special plan, and cities and urban areas plans as provided for under the Urban Areas and Cities Act, uh, section 13 and section 201. Citizens under the current constitution dispensation are now more empowered by understanding their rights and the responsibilities of leadership in realizing this right that we stand for. Mr. Speaker, it is therefore incumbent upon us to develop approaches that will enable us to respond appropriately to these demands through proper planning and execution as I say. Mr. Speaker, the committees in particular, the Public Accounts and Investment Committee of the County Assembly, has had commendable improvement in scrutinizing and examining the county government's audited accounts and tabled them in this house. In this regard, therefore, it is imperative that the recommendations, suggestions, and comments in those tabled reports and adopted by this house should always be acted upon by the executive in the subsequent budget period. Mr. Speaker, enhanced investments in achieving accountability and public financial management is in part in this more effective and sustainable um, uh, preventative measure uh, to abuse of funds from, uh, from occurring from time to time. And the people can be custodial to our account against perpetrators of this kind of uh, misappropriation remain the county assembly. <clears throat> the county assembly should develop therefore a robust framework for addressing its oversight function. The county assembly must be considered for a ward fund, which is not a development fund, but a facilitated fund to make sure that the county assembly, not only of the own, but all county assemblies, can be able to perform an oversight plan. Mr. Speaker, in order to meet the mandate and the freedom of the people of Bengali and provide assurance on the management of public resources, the county assembly should continuously undertake project site visits and regular inspection of quality intervention frameworks by the county manager. This stresses why this idea of world fund is extremely critical to the members of this house. There is growing demand for quality service delivery in the county, county government by the public management and accountability systems, and therefore it is critical that that international function must be funded, financed, and facilitated. Mr. Speaker, turning to matters government, it is my firm belief that corruption will be locked out from involved units only when county assemblies carry out proper oversight, transcending across the functions being undertaken by the county executive. In this regard, assembly committees have a duty to continue serving as the primary implementers of specific sectoral oversight through budgetary allocation and ensuring adherence to the county integrated development plan. Mr. Speaker, the people of Kenya rightly have huge expectations for the system of involved governance and therefore, those who have been put in charge and have a specific business in the name of revolution, like the steam of this house, must rise to these expectations. Today, great challenges that we experience should not be allowed to dampen the spirit or obstruct the objectives of revolution. Mr. Speaker, to promote physical prudence and accountability, which are fundamental principles outlined under Article 201D of the Constitution. It is necessary for the county assembly to enact the county finance act and appropriate appropriation act in alignment with national goals and vision for that. By so doing, honorable members, we not only ensure coherence in our physical policies, but also contribute to the overall development of the county, man and monitored by MCPs. As a Senate, we are fully committed to enforcing compliance and implementing strict spending measures that will facilitate you um, downward trend 
you are now trained in the current expenditure while placing greater emphasis on development, which honorable members must always oversee. 